So Singapore will be my second home for the next four years because of uh, the work that we have expanding in, uh, in ecosystems and consulting practice. So uh, it's really great, great to be here. As, uh, as an analyst, uh, since 99, I joined the industry. Uh, I've sat through lots of presentations, talks about uh, trends and directions, and, and I'm quite often left with that feeling of, what if we just took it a little bit further? Like, what's the next thing that sort of happens at the practical coalface for clients when they're trying to solve problems with these trends? Or, you know, what is the link between a trend and a client problem and finding a solution? And so that's, that's part of what my role is uh, at Ecosystem. And sustainability is certainly one of those uh, trend areas, which has been very topical now for, for a couple of years, but you, uh, you see a lot of organisations talk about it, but this connection between uh, the thinking and the doing can, can often be uh, a little bit disconnected. It's one of the major areas where we're seeing some incredible change um, from across all industries and all geographies still. And so today I just want to talk about some of, um, some of those things. And so sustainability from insights to execution or from the trends to thinking about how we can solve uh, some, of, some of the world's problems um, through this topic. So I briefly want to share some thoughts, three thoughts with you today um, over the next 10 or 15 minutes. Um, one about this concept of digital unification, uh, a second concept to sort of talk about some of the structural changes that we're seeing and to really think about the impact of those changes um, in specific industries and then sort of wrap up and talk about um, uh, a very interesting area in, ter in terms of uh, existential realities. And if you think about um, sustainability, sustainability in, uh, in education, in climate, in housing, in employment, in growth, in energy, in food security. Um, these are the existential problems that we're uh, challenged to address in the world today. And so when we talk about helping organisations solve, problem, uh, solve problems, we can think about the technology, but the technology is very much about helping to solve some of those existential problems. So the first, uh, the first sort of slide up here, if you ask me, this is probably the only slide you need to have on your desk for the next five years. It, it basically describes everything that's going on in the world today. Um, what we are seeing is this concept that all infrastructure is now digital infrastructure. And so we used to think about digital infrastructure in terms of being IT. There's still IT, but when we talk about where the world is today, we're talking about technology. And it is technology that is driving solutions in the world. Um, and the focus on IT is changing. And so there's sort of five key parts to this diagram. And I'll just take a couple of minutes to unpack it. On this side, you see digital infrastructure. And that sort of represents our traditional approach or thinking about IT. So that is your uh, cloud computing. And that is your data centers and your networks. And, that traditional sort of computing um, uh, area that has driven the industry for the last 30 years and all the, through all the cycles that Tim spoke about earlier. On the other side, that interlocking circle digital engineering, that is now talking about the concept of how all assets are being digitized, all physical assets are being digitized. And so, whereas IT has always focused on the core computing. We're starting to see now this shift where physical assets, whether they be buildings or roads or planes or whatever it is, be digitized. And so that is sort of bringing in a whole new uh, perspective to the way organizations are being run and strategically planned. The other two circles sort of kissing each other from the top and the bottom. The first is digital reality. And digital reality is that space that incorporates everything from augmented uh, reality to virtual reality to digital um, twins to the metaverse. Um, all those sort of spatial 
digital experiences we have in these alternate realities that we're creating um, in uh, the digital spaces. And so there's no, this gives you a perfect view that there is no one metaverse, right? There are a number of different uh, metaverses and digital realities, but they all collectively live in this same space. And then the other key driver to sort of round it out is this concept of existential reality. And that's what I was sort of talking about before, where sustainability is one of those existential reality problems. And so that's the problem bucket. We don't exist for pure IT. We don't exist because we build roads and cities and bridges and, you know, run, build airplanes and, and run uh, all sorts of transport networks. Um, part of the uh, challenges that we're looking to address exist within this existential reality. So what are the challenges of the day for the world that we have to solve? And when you look regionally, um, whether you look geopolitically or whether you're just looking inside your own organisation and you're thinking about things like employment equity, that's an existential reality challenge. And so when you're a client organisation, you're not always thinking about what am I doing in the data centre, in, you know, in having been on the client side, the business discussions are always about these things that happen down the bottom. Now, where it all comes together, and this is the interesting or the most interesting part is that they, the relative piece for all four circles is digital data. And so digital data is the unifying currency of those four intersecting circles. And so that is the concept of digital unification that we're talking about. Now there's a final piece that you see around the outside, and that is this concept of the ecosystem economy. And you're starting to hear a lot more about the ecosystem economy now. And that the ecosystem economy says, you can look at, uh, at this graphic, for example, and it is no longer the, uh, it is no longer just up to an individual organization to be capable in each of these buckets. In fact, if you're looking to solve problems for your organization or your city or your country, it's, ve it's very likely that you will need to be working in partnerships um, in your own network of integrated um, economies, whether they be supply chains or partners or things like that. Now, the interesting thing is that when you look at all these things together, if you look at where the financial investments are being made globally, either by central banks or private equity or uh, traditional institutions, massive amounts of funding is being poured into the digitization of assets, physical assets. Massive amounts of money are being poured into digital reality investments and huge, huge amounts of money are being poured into solving existential reality problems. That's in comparison to money that's being poured into traditional IT. So the money and investment being poured into those traditional business sides of the global economy, industries, geographies, just absolutely dwarfs the investments being made into IT. But what is happening is that it is acting as a draw on IT to bring them into solving those problems. So if you're in the market of selling technology solutions, this switch in focus now to start thinking about who in the organization you're selling to, for example, if you're still trying to sell to the CIO, the CIO is not getting the money. It's the asset owners and the engineers and the portfolio managers and all those other people that are getting the money and they're the ones trying to solve these digital reality problems, these existential reality problems, these digital engineering problems. And so this switch in focus becomes really important. I saw a, uh, an article from McKinsey last week to, to say that $60 trillion will be invested in the ecosystem economy between now and 2025. 
This is a structural change. This is the structural change of the 21st century, and so it deserves our attention. So to bring it back to the topic of the day, what does all this mean in terms of sustainability? Because we want to help our clients solve their problems. What it means is that the digitization of assets, being an asset portfolio manager is no longer just something that occurs in financial services or, or a central providence fund or some other kind of 401k or retirement um, you know, massive investment vehicle or for some of the big mining companies and government agencies that you would consider to be the big traditional asset portfolio managers. This is now everybody's problem and this is part of the 21st century structural change that we're seeing. So if you then look at that in the context of sustainability, and this is where we're starting to you know, see organisations think about, well, what is our strategy to solve some of these problems? And the example I want to use today is around um, electrification and uh, the electrification of, of vehicles, right? And so if you look at the pure number of vehicles on the planet today, whether they be passenger or heavy vehicles, let's round it up and say two billion. Um, uh, if, if you put a painted car park on every piece of land in Singapore, you would need 20 Singapores to hold every single vehicle on the planet. In the next eight years, most of the world will be transitioning that transport platform to uh, electric. So it's the electrification of that platform. It is a structural change of the fundamental transport platform that we have been used to in the 20th century. So this is sort of one of those core 21st century structural changes. Nothing much has happened actually in the last 30 or 40 years, either in terms of technology. You heard Tim say, talk about you know, cloud computing. Now we realize it's just a transition state. You know, mobility was just a transition state. These are sort of core building blocks we had to have. No one's doing mobility strategies. No one's doing cloud strategies. We're trying to get to something else. And the something else that we're trying to figure out is what are the other structural changes that we're seeing in the planet? Transport is one of them. Building infrastructure is another. It's sort of those big ticket items. And so um, by comparison, uh, again, to sort of draw the point to where the investment money is going, we've got about 8 million public data centres on the planet. Yet our focus has always been on IT, 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 IT. The focus can't be on IT anymore. IT as an enabler, but we need to be having conversations with different people. So if we pull all this together then, in terms of this kind of disruption that we're seeing, does this mean IT walks away from the party that we've been enjoying. Like essentially IT's been a frat party for the last 30 years. Um, do we walk away from it? No, but this is the biggest challenge we've faced because it's, you know, who we're selling to, who has the influence about the strategic direction of these businesses and these platforms, who has the budgets to spend on IT. It's not really the CIO at the moment, you know, and the CIO hasn't figured out to, how to work with a lot of the boards or the chief engineers or the chief asset owners and things like that. But if you look at electric vehicles as just one example, you can see that in the space of digital infrastructure, uh, digital reality, digital engineering and existential reality, there is a massive opportunity being created by just this disruption in terms of the capabilities required by businesses and governments and whole industries to be able to make this transition in a very short period of time. Um, the uh, European Union came out just a couple of weeks ago and said, we need to quadruple our investment in EV transition infrastructure within the next two years. We need to quadruple it in two years. So again, a fundamental structural change that we're seeing. And I won't go through it. That's why I sort of put some, uh, some content up there so that you can see. But in terms of, again, tying the sustainability trend 
to the technologies and to the client outcomes, whether we're talking about helping organisations with their sustainability strategies, whatever that is, it needs to be sort of asset specific and measurable, whether it's carbon or you know what, uh, whatever that looks like, or whether it is in the energy management um, side of things, or whether it is actually in these um, fleet transition strategies that we're, that we're sort of seeing, or whether it is in the data, the digital data that is holding all this together, because we know that these new platforms, they're essentially, they're the biggest form of edge computing that we're going to see. Every digital asset becomes a piece of the edge, right? And so that requires data, that will require data centers, but we have to sort of flip that on its head and come at it from a completely different perspective. So I'll finish on this note, which is to say, as humans, we, we find it really challenging to think about things differently, right? So sometimes we need a punch in the face, sort of go, why, are, why, why aren't we doing anything different? The fact is, and this, is, this, this quote comes from a couple of um, US uh, human behavior professors, uh, they say, when we don't know what to do, we just keep doing more of what we know how to do. That ain't gonna change anything. And so the challenge becomes to start thinking about these things with the 21st century mindset. And what I see too often is still clients and still technology companies still trying to position themselves in the way we always have. There's so much 20th century marketing going on um, in, in, the, um, in the technology supply space. And it's actually hampering our ability to get to sort of the root cause of the problem and what's going to happen is that we'll see sort of a rush to market around some of these solutions. And so uh, the, the graphic on, on the right there, for those of you who want to go and do some deeper sort of thinking about the existential side of things is just this view of donut economics. Um, and so donut economics is, uh, is, it's a great book, but it talks about the concept that the economic models, again, the 20th century economic metrics of GDP and inflation and all those sorts of things, they don't really work in the 21st century because they don't actually help us solve the problems of the day. You can see what they do is they actually create more problems. 20th century economic models actually throw kerosene on things like inflation and things like mortgage rates and interest rates and um, they flow, they throw kerosene on unemployment problems. Donut economics is a sort of is a different perspective on thinking about a more sustainable approach, which aligns well with our desire to solve some of these big challenges of the day. So, um, those of you that are interested in our ecosystem consulting practice, we do have information to share. I know it's not going to sort of fit everybody uh, everybody's interest or or approach the market, but please reach out. Thank you. Thank you.